staircase mining. Now, as some of you may or may not know, digging straight down in Minecraft is never a good idea, and probably one of the safer ways to go about it is by doing something called staircase mining, where you leave a block after you've already mined a certain level, so you can kind of jump back onto it after you've gone deep enough and you want to get out. What this ends up doing is it makes it a lot safer so you don't fall, and also makes it tremendously easier to escape once you're done mining in that particular cave. So in general, I always recommend you incorporate some kind of staircase mining depending on where you're going. Tip number 49 is a nice little trick that will save your life when using a water bucket. Now, in general, I recommend you carry a water bucket, and we're going to talk about all the things you can do that are useful with that a little bit later. But one certainly thing you can do if you're falling from a high up place is to save yourself by placing water at the right moment before you hit the ground. And the way you do this is spam your jump button and also spam your place button as you're falling. And just before you hit that last block, that water should be able to save you and you'll take no damage. Number 47 is going to be using your swimming mechanic properly. Now, before I got back into Minecraft, the swimming mechanic was not a thing. And so when I got back into the game, this was all brand new to me. But when you hold shift while you're underwater, you go into a swimming animation and you go significantly faster than you would if you were just sort of like wading in the water. And so this is the best way to transport. You can cover some pretty nice ground doing this. If you come out of the water, you will leave your swimming animation, but it is the best way to swim hands down. Coming in at number 46 is going to be making coal blocks for better efficiency. Now, I recommend doing this in a couple of circumstances. Either if you're going to be transporting a lot of coal from one area to another and you want to save space, it's good to make them the blocks. But also, if you just want to maybe burn a little bit more materials, then coal blocks are better to do it than just single individual ores. But either way, they're both very good. If you're doing some serious smelting, and I mean like absolutely serious, then probably make coal blocks as the efficiency will count in that regard. But otherwise, you can do what you feel is necessary. Tip number 45 is going to be trading simple items to villagers to get emeralds. I don't ever recommend your primary source of emeralds being mining it because you're just not going to find too many. If you trade simple items like some vegetables or whatever you have at your hand to get some emeralds to begin with, trade up with some other villagers, and then eventually work your way up to maybe getting diamonds from some of them or just some really top tier stuff, that is the best way to make use of all your excess items you don't want and then also use your emeralds because you can't make tools out of that kind of stuff. You also really have no other use for emeralds besides maybe decoration, but I really recommend using those as a currency to get good stuff from the villagers. After trading your throwaway items, of course. Tip number 44 is going to be using your gold nuggets to make healing items. Odds are, after you've done quite a bit of mining, you're going to end up with a bit of excess gold, and, and clearly you're not going to really want to make that your primary source of tool making, so what are you going to do with all that excess gold? Making gold nuggets and then placing it on a lot of your food items is going to be the best healing item you could ever give yourself. Golden healing items are the best thing to have against the fight if you're facing a really difficult enemy or if you're just in a lot of trouble and you don't want to lose your stuff and die, a gold healing item can instantly restore you back to full health and uh, can save you from a lot of bad scenarios. Number 43 is going to be using redstone to make safety doors. Now, the best way to do with all your excess redstone is to maybe make some kind of safe for your valuables and then make it so only the door will open with an iron door using redstone. You can open it from wherever the trail leaves, wherever you want the lever to be to get into that safe, but it's a good thing to hide all your valuables. Number 42, if you're ever exploring underwater and you come across one of these temples, odds are you're going to find some underwater zombies. And these guys can be a little bit tough. And some of them throw tridents, which travel really fast underwater and can just absolutely beam you. Now, and your problem is bows aren't super effective down here. However, you can still use them. But what you're going to notice is that your bow drops off significantly while it's in the water, but you can still damage if you compensate a little bit and just aim higher. I don't recommend you fight these things unless you absolutely have to, but that's the best way to go about it to keep them away at a distance is to compensate with your bow a bit if you're stuck underwater. If you are going to be traveling underwater and swimming and exploring, then if you have armor and enchantments at this point, I recommend going for the ones that are specifically made for the water. For example, you can get an enchantment on your helmet that actually allows you to breathe for longer underwater. You can also get an enchantment on your boot that makes you be able to swim much, much faster while you're underwater, even if you're in that swimming animation. And it's great. I absolutely recommend it if you're going to be doing any kind of water exploring. Number 40 is kind of an organizational tip that I think will help you in the long run. I recommend when storing food, you have two different chests. You have one for cooked materials and things that are ready to be used. And then you have another chest for raw materials, just so when you kind of mix things up together, it gets a little bit disorganized. And if you do it right, making food, keeping the production up, and then also organizing your raw and then cooked resources makes your life way easier. Speaking of food, tip number 39 is going to be opening up multiple food sources for yourself. Now, it might take you a little bit to get to this point in the game, but eventually you'll have enough of a farm where you'll have a bunch of vegetables going at once. You can even have an animal farm for some just like extra sustenance. If you're able to set up multiple farms and you do them right, you'll never ever have to leave your house for food and it's just an almost an infinite generation.
generating source. Combine that with the fact that when you organize your food properly, then you'll never ever have to worry about food again and you can focus your time on other stuff. I recommend setting up as many vegetables as possible as well as having like both a pig and cow farm at the same time. Tip number 38 is going to be taming yourself a wolf and having it as a companion. Now you can do this with multiple animals that will actually be your companion if you do it right. Like for example, you can tame a llama if you so wish and you can tame multiple animals as well. But definitely one of the essentials is to tame a wolf, have it as your companion because it'll do so many great things for you. It'll follow you wherever you go. It'll fight for you if you start attacking something and can be like a second hand in saving your life. Keep in mind, you cannot bring them to the nether, unfortunately, so they're going to have to stay in this part of the realm, but you can leave them in your house if you like as well. And as a side note, I just think they're honestly pretty cool to keep around. Number 37 is remembering that you can use excess wood as fuel if you so need to. Now, I don't recommend this for most players because odds are, if you're able to gather enough coal, you're never going to need to use this. But a lot of people forget they can burn in the oven using some excess wood they have, and they don't necessarily need to have coal on hand. You can also make charcoal if you need. However, I will say wood has much more utility than just burning it, so make sure you think twice about doing it and only do it if it's your last resource. Tip number 36 is going to be keeping a lava pit as sort of a garbage bin. Now, odds are when you've done enough of survival, you have a lot of excess material that you can just throw away. And there's not really a clear place to do away with it. You might accidentally keep picking it back up and just getting the way. It's getting annoying. So keep a lava pit somewhere safe. Obviously not by any wood as it'll catch on fire. But if you keep it around some stone, you can just use this as a trash can to throw all your excess materials away. Tip number 35 is going to be keeping your nether portal safe. Now, it doesn't really matter too much where you put it in, like, the regular earth realm on Minecraft. Like, you can keep it in your house, you can put it on a hill, whatever you want. What's important is protecting it on the other side when you get to the nether, because what happens, it's going to spawn essentially anywhere in the nether at all. And if as soon as you come out of the nether, you're in danger from, like, a gas or something, or there's a lot of enemies around you, it's just in an unsafe place. What I recommend you do is kind of build, like, a turtle shell defense around your portal, because that's your really only ticket home. You've got to prevent that portal from being destroyed if it's under attack by any means necessary so building a kind of turtle shell defense around that portal so it doesn't get blown up is the best way to keep it safe another thing you can do is build your corners of the portal out of cobblestone so that you save a little bit more of that obsidian if you need to make a secondary portal Number 34, this is going to sound pretty self-explanatory, but it's still very important, is to make sure you're prepared when you're entering the nether. This means maybe have some enchantments for fire resistance, also have a water bucket, of course. Water bucket is arguably more important than anything you could take to the nether, so make sure you have one before you go. Having a lot of food is necessary because there's not a lot besides mushrooms you can get out of here either. A lot of this you guys know, but general preparedness is good. Number 33, guys, is going to be making a beacon to signal your house. Now, this is going to require you to get some pretty decent materials in this game as well as some diamonds so it's not something you can build right off the bat but when you have the resources in order to be able to build the beacon it's so unbelievably good to have because it'll mark a spot that'll shine a bright beam right into the sky pointing out where you need to be the beacon is so important to not get lost if you're struggling with that tip number 32 is iron is one of the most valuable things in the game even though it's very easy to find it is the best multi-purpose ore you can ever have so what i recommend you do with all of your iron is make all of your like everyday tools your swords your, that you're going to burn through, your pickaxes, your armor, whatnot. If you have diamond stuff, that should be for only when and if you need it. But you should have loads of iron tools in circulation, and if one breaks, it doesn't matter because the resource is very easy to find. The very strong material on everything it's used on, and I recommend in general just stocking up on it to have at your leisure. Number 31 is going to be making yourself some potions. This is likely going to be after you visited the nether at least once and gathered some materials, but potions are so useful to have at hand, and they range for anything from from having a potion of night vision ability, some that heal you, some that make you invisible, you name it. There's an unbelievable amount of potions in this game, and I recommend that if you really want to start taking this game to the next level and using some cool abilities to invest in that. You're going to need to get the required tools and materials to brew the potions, obviously, but it's definitely worth something sinking your time into. Tip number 30 is going to be looting desert temples. If you're ready and you know what you're doing. Now, this is basically like a big noob trap here. If you don't know what these are all about, it'll present to you a chest at the bottom of the temple that looks very easy to get but as some of you experienced minecraft players you'll know that this is a trap and you'll end up dying the whole temple will essentially explode if you if you kind of fall into the trap but clever players know a way around this and you can actually get the loot out of it some of the loot you can find are things like saddles you can find horse armor some really rare and interesting items can be taken from these desert temples but they obviously do come with a risk if you're going to be approaching them and that leads nicely also into tip 29 which is going to be raiding woodland mansions also if you know what you're doing and if 
if you're ready. The thing is, these Woodland Mansions are a little bit hard to raid and, and, and kind of come away with it alive, but if you're able to do so, most likely you're going to come away with a Totem of Undying, and essentially this is an item that if you're holding it in your hand and you take a death, it will instantly revive you. Minecraft right now, this is really the only way to cheat death like that, and it's probably the best item in the entire game. Again, looting a desert temple or trying to raid a woodland mansion both come with their risk, but they certainly have great rewards if you're able to do them correctly. Number 28 is going to be crotch walking backwards when fighting spiders, as it's going to make them a lot harder for them to hit you. This works best on spiders, of course. All enemy types aren't going to have a hard time if you're crotch walking backwards, but if you're specifically fighting a bunch of these, then this might not be a bad thing to do. Tip number 25 is saving the bottom trunk of the tree for last. What you can do with this, it's like a little quality of life thing. You save that one for the final break so you can stand on top of it and break the rest of the tree so that it despawns and then you get all of the wood, even if it's a little bit high up and out of your range. So you can break that one for the final and then you end up with exactly the amount of wood that you should get from that tree, but it just saves you a bit of time. Tip 24 is making a shield to use against the pesky skeletons. A lot of new players struggle playing against skeletons just because they can hit you from a range and it's a little bit hard to take these guys down, especially when there's a lot but when you have a shield you're able to hold this thing out in front of you as protection you can hold it in your other hand if you like and have the sword and the other hand that's not being used and you can take these things down with ease now the shield is just a good tool to have in general i think one of the most useful pieces of equipment you can make for yourself but it's especially good against skeletons and uh, pretty much all of the other mob enemy types my opinion a shield is just as crucial as having like say a sword or say having a pickaxe they don't take too much to put together they last quite a long time as well so they're all around amazing tip 23 is going to be sprint jumping now this is a pretty easy one to get a hold of this is just jumping while you're holding your sprint key it's the easiest way and fastest way to get around as well faster than sprinting it does take up a lot of your hunger but it is by far the most efficient way to get around now if you have it as a setting i recommend you turn it off because it's just easier to manually control aside from it making you auto jump but it's uh it's the best way to get around and there's nothing really to it. Number 22 is to go ahead and make an anvil. Now these are great for repairing all of your tools that maybe are low in durability and are close to breaking. All you need is the tool itself, maybe a resource and then some XP in order to create this. Highly recommend you use this to maintain your valuable tools. This means like a diamond sword, a diamond pickaxe, and even armor. Anything you don't want breaking, an anvil will make sure that happens. Tip number 21 is it's going to be best to fish while it's raining. This will give you the best odds at getting a lot of fish. It's also really Really good to do this when we talked about opening multiple food sources maybe while you have other food cooking go ahead and start fishing to just gather some more raw materials it's also a chance that while you're fishing you can grab things like armor you might accidentally yoink a pair of leather boots right out of the water and that happens sometimes but more often than not you're going to get some fish that's just going to be extra resources for you it's best to do it while it's raining once again so i recommend you take full advantage of the river and sea while that's actually happening tip number 20 bringing some seeds and even bone meal into caves is always a good idea especially if you're going to be doing some extended mining. What I mean by that is like not leaving for a very long period of time to a point where you may run out of food. If you have bone meal, you have some seeds, maybe some mushrooms, you can actually grow some food down in the caves where you have some dirt. And sometimes that may be enough that what it is to keep you alive. Now, I don't think you're going to be using this all of the time, but it's one of the things that in my opinion is better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. You should ideally go into a cave with enough food, but if that's not the case, then do this. Number 19, a neat little trick with torches you can do if you're underwater, you're drowning, and you don't have air anytime soon, you can take torches, go up against a wall, and start spamming them. And what this is going to do is create a small air pocket for a short period of time until the torch breaks, allowing you to get some of those bubbles back, maybe giving you a back to full air, or at least making a way where you can hit the surface again. Back in the day, one torch used to restore you to full air instantly, but they've kind of nerfed it since then. But if you still spam your torches, you can get almost the same effect, and it should save your life if you need it. Number 18, guys, don't even bother making gold tools whatsoever, especially swords, especially equipment that you're going to be using quite a bit, even in combat. Even though gold is a rare material, it's kind of a cool resource to find, and it's exciting. Gold does not make for good utility. The hit power on gold swords is pretty weak. The durability on every single tool with it is very, very low as well. You're better off making iron for your, you know, your general day-to-day -day stuff, but use gold for other things like healing items, not tools. Number 17, guys, is going to be placing torches on the ground to help prevent mob spawns better. Now, when you're lighting up a cave, the way mobs spawn is just basically from the darkness. And so if you're able to light up the cave enough, that will prevent any mobs from spawning. However, the best way to do this, the most efficient way is to have them on the ground where it carries the most light. You definitely can put them on the walls and especially in really dark corners. Do what you got to do, but having them on the ground, lighting up a really nice pathway is the best way to keep your cave safe. 
Speaking of mobs, number 16 is mobs cannot spawn on half slabs. This is just some useful information to know. They can essentially spawn anywhere except this, so use that information how you like. If you want to kind of maybe line something with safety on half slabs to prevent mobs from spawning, go ahead and do that, and I recommend it. Not something that's super practical, but it's definitely good information just to keep in the back of your mind if you if you ever need it. Tip number 15, when getting familiar with the different enchantments, there's one in particular you might like, which is called Silk Touch. And this allows you to mine an exact block without breaking it. So for example, you could take a Silk Touch pickaxe and then mine a piece of glass without breaking it down. Because otherwise, if you just use a regular tool, the glass would shatter. But you can use Silk Touch to actually mine the block itself. And this goes for anything in the game using that Silk Touch enchantment. Also, speaking of enchantments, tip number 14 is I recommend you get a another enchantment on your pickaxe called Fortunate before you mine diamonds. What this is going to do whenever you come across some diamond ore is you're going to net more diamonds out of that ore than you otherwise would without Fortunate. It's just a good thing to have in general. Tip 13 is going to know that different foods grant you different saturation levels. So for example, some lighter foods like an apple or a carrot are not going to last as long in your hunger bar as like more heartier food like a golden apple per se or even like a steak or a pork chop. These things mean that the hunger bar will last longer. It's more of a heavier food essentially. So that's why sometimes you might eat like a lot of bread, but you realize your hunger bar goes down pretty quickly and you're wondering why. Rather you eat a steak and it lasts significantly longer. That's the reason. Tip number 12, if you're going to be growing sugarcane, which I recommend you do because it's a great resource, is to grow on sand. People claim that this is the best way and the fastest way to grow sugarcane, and the reason you want the resource is because sugar is not only an important ingredient in making cakes, but it's also really good for trading with villagers, as oftentimes that's what they want. Having a block of sand in contact with water maybe near your house or by your farms is probably the easiest way to go about it. Number 11 is keeping your hotbar organized. This is important, and there's no really right way to do it. You do whatever feels comfortable to you, but for me, I like to keep my sword in my first slot, either my pickaxe or my bow in my second, and then my shield in my third, torch in my fourth, water bucket in my fifth, and then my food in my sixth, and just whatever mis miscellaneous stuff you might have. But you can organize it however you like and whatever you're comfortable with, but make sure that you can get to anything you need in a moment's notice. Number 10, if you're struggling with Endermen, a really good thing to do is just put that water bucket in front of you. Endermen normally calm down if they're submerged in water, but if one is just being pesky and you're having trouble fighting them off, instead of getting close enough to use your sword and then you kind of put yourself in danger, just simply putting a water bucket down over and over again will cause them to go away and then take damage over time. They really don't like water, so if you surround yourself with water, you make it a lot harder for them to get uh, actually up to you. Probably the best defense you can have against these guys, if I'm being honest. Number nine, is timing your swings when sword fighting because that is absolutely crucial for doing the most amount of damage. Now, if you just spam your sword, you can still hit people, but the hits are going to be a lot weaker than they otherwise would if you let your swipe kind of recharge. What you want to do to deal maximum damage is let your swing reset, and the moment it resets, you swing again. So you can get the most amount of hard hits in, but the, and it's an amazing way if you just want to upgrade armor, make potions, that kind of thing. I really recommend you set up at least one of these. Number seven, upon defeating your raid, you'll be granted with the effect called hero of the village and what this allows you to do is reduce the cost of the first trade with any villager by 30 percent and it's something that's really going to be extremely useful if you're trading something valuable maybe in order to get diamonds it's great for that you beat a raid, take advantage of, of this effect as much as you possibly can. Tip number six is keeping your ender eyes or anything extremely valuable in an ender chest. You can hide it somewhere in the world where it's basically no chance of being destroyed. Put the other side in maybe like your safe house. And the thing is, between these two chests, there's a connection. So you can pull any items that are in that ender chest from either side. And this is the best way to keep ender eyes just in case one chest gets destroyed. You don't lose all of that progress. You won't have these right off the bat, but definitely invest in some ender chests when you can. Tip number five, make sure you use your crotch walk when you're crawling through tight spaces or if maybe you're high up on an elevation with a chasm underneath you when you're crotch walking you have zero chance when you're holding that crouch to fall off that side even if you kind of back up into it you let go of that crouch if you're still in that position you won't fall if you move any more farther than that wall without crouching then you will fall down that chasm but this is the best way to be safe and, and really not fall off any places that you shouldn't number four if you're going to be traveling by boat make sure when you leave it you go ahead and hit it a couple times to break it and take it with you i said 
I see a lot of people just leaving their boat where it is and then maybe kind of forgetting about it. But if you break it and then you pick it back up, you can place it anywhere you like as well. Tip number three, putting two chests back to back, you can make a double chest and they're unbelievably useful this way. You have so much room in them, pretty much in excess of more than you'll ever need. You can have an entire storage area if you want of just complete double chests. They're really easy to pull from and uh, they look stylish as well. So there's no reason to not have it. Tip number two, if you do end up defeating the ender dragon and you get the dragon egg, then hold on to it and keep it somewhere safe because there's literally only one per game and they're so rare you can't even spawn them in creative mode if you would like to. The dragon egg, if you manage to get it, is the most rare item in the game. So hold it tight and keep it somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Now, finally, guys, coming in today at the number one spot, if you've made it this far in the video, then let me know in the comment section just by leaving a smiley face. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end. But the number one survival tip I can give you guys that it's really going to help you out practically is to make yourself a compass and a map. These, I think, are by far the most important tools you can do for yourself, especially if you're new to Minecraft, you're a little bit of a beginner, and you just want some extra tips for surviving in this game. What a map is going to do is basically mark out exactly where you are, maybe, maybe where your house is, and the general vicinity of the area surrounding you. Now, the compass, if you get too far to the range of your map, will give you the general direction of which you need to head in order to get back home. These two tools in combination, even if you want a clock, which can be helpful, it's more or less just decoration, but these two tools in con in conjunction will make it so that you never, ever get lost in this game, and so they're just, they're unbelievably helpful, and I cannot recommend them strongly.